Good morning and welcome to worship at Fair Bluff Baptist Church. We are online and on fire because our God is on duty 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 366, yes, it's leap year, days a year. So let us worship our one true God today who cannot be postponed, canceled, or rescheduled because he's God. Our sanctuary may be empty this morning, but our hearts are full. As we begin worship today, would you go to the Lord with me in prayer? Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so humbled in your presence today. It seems that we have sensed your presence in a much more powerful way than usual in these past days and weeks. And Father, we want to thank you for being in control when our world seems out of control. Father, we want to lift up every single person that is being impacted by this pandemic. We lift up those who are suffering from the disease, COVID-19. We ask that your hand of protection would be upon every medical personnel, all of those who are providing uh, the goods and services that we need to be able to shelter in place. We pray for our missionaries serving around the world dur during these very difficult times. And Father, we pray that you would speak to our hearts today as we draw aside to worship on this, the Lord's day. We pray that all that we say and do would be done in a way that would bring you honor and glory for you alone are worthy of all glory and praise. We ask that you lead and guide our thoughts now. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue in our worship, we want to now welcome Ann Jernigan, our dear friend and sister in the Lord, as she shares with us, His Eye is on the Sparrow.
Thank you, Ann. My goodness, how beautiful. Now, if we had been under normal circumstances today, I would have called this message, Be Still and Know That I Am God, based on Psalm 46. But due to our current circumstances, the message for today has been updated to the coronavirus version, and the new title is Shelter in Place. Different title, same message. So would you listen as I read Psalm 46, the psalm that inspired Martin Luther to write that great Reformation hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Listen. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. But he lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. This morning, I'd like to share three guidelines for sheltering in place. And the first guideline is to shelter in the Lord. Listen to verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. There are three reasons in that verse that explain why we should shelter in the Lord. The first reason is that God is our refuge. He is our safe place. He is our strong tower, our fort, our fortress. He's the place we run to in the midst of a storm. I remember a scene from one of my all-time favorite movies, The Wizard of Oz, when that twister is coming and all of Dorothy's circle of family and friends are doing their best to get into that storm cellar because they knew they would be safe there. That's literally a picture of how we can run to God because He is our refuge, our safe place. The second reason that we should shelter in the Lord is that he is our strength. The psalmist wrote, God is our refuge and strength. The apostle Paul prayed a prayer for the church at Ephesus. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. And I want to read this prayer for us in the same way that Paul wrote this prayer and prayed it for the church at Ephesus. He wrote, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. The psalmist said, God is our refuge and strength. The third reason that we should shelter in the Lord is that he, as it says, is an ever-present help 
in trouble. The Amplified Version says ever-present means very present, well-proven, always there to help. I smiled when I read that phrase because throughout my lifetime, God has placed different people in my life to help me in times of trouble. If I had car trouble uh, when we were flooded and I could call on these people, I believe if I called them right now, they would answer the phone and say, Miss Phyllis, what do you need? Uh, Mr. Ronald Floyd in Green Sea, Mr. Eddie Singletary in Tabor City, and Mr. Gene Martin in Fair Bluff, to name a few. And I've laughed a couple of times when I've called someone and they didn't answer, and I've left a voicemail that said, well, what in the world would I do if I were in a ditch and needed your help? Well, you don't ever have to worry about God not answering you when you call because Psalm 46, 1 says he is an ever-present help in trouble. That means he's there to help you today, right now, whatever your need is. So the first guideline that I want you to follow on sheltering in place is that you need to shelter in the Lord. The second guideline is that you need to shelter without fear. Listen to verse 2. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Now, J. Vernon McGee, Everybody that knows him loves that Bible preacher and teacher. J. Vernon McGee said, Though the earth be removed, the removal of the earth would be the most extreme circumstances I can think of. John Mark, who wrote the Gospel of Mark, in telling the story of Jesus calming the sea while he was in the boat with the disciples, listen to verses 40 and 41 about this fear concept. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Verse 41, just listen. They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Now, I want you to listen carefully to the footnote in my life application Bible on those two verses. It reads, The disciples lived with Jesus but they underestimated him. They did not see that his power applied to their very own situation. Jesus has been with his people for 20 centuries, and yet we, like the disciples, underestimate his power to handle the crises in our lives. The disciples did not yet know enough about Jesus, but we cannot make the same excuse. The first guideline in sheltering in place is to shelter in the Lord. The second guideline is to shelter without fear. And the third guideline is found in verse 10, and it's to shelter with a purpose. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Two things I want you to get from that verse. Number one, we are commanded, we are told, instructed to be still. Do you think God has our attention right now? Who would have thought a few months ago that not just our community or our state, even our nation, but the entire world has come to a screeching halt over a tiny virus. You know, what, what do you think God is trying to say to us right now? What can we learn from this time of being still? Well, one thing for sure, and it's the second point in this verse, is that it says, and know that I am God. I think he's trying to get our attention. And I think one of the things he's telling us is that we are not in control whatsoever. And he is in control. I want to read a, a post from Facebook that someone copied and reposted and said that we had permission to do the same. And I shared this with the congregation two weeks ago, but we had not even started this process uh, hardly at that point in time. Listen to what it says. 
notice how fast the whole world can fall apart. In the blink of an eye, we are out of toilet paper. In the blink of an eye, college campuses close and there's no more NBA or ACC or March Madness. In the blink of an eye, it would be impossible to travel by plane. In the blink of an eye, you'll be quarantined to your homes, but fired if you don't show up for work. In the blink of an eye, every nation trembles. Mankind is so frail and a tiny little invisible virus has disrupted so much. Now, if we can't handle this, what do you think it will be like standing before God without the blood of Christ on your side? This life is temporary. We are not promised another second. In the blink of an eye, we can step into eternity. Jesus is standing at the door of your heart and knocking. Will you let him in? My challenge to each of you that's listening to this message today is this. Would you at the end of this worship service take just a few moments and, and ask God, what are you saying to me during this time of being still, Lord? What do you want me to learn? What lesson do I need to hear from you and apply to my life? Isaiah 30, 21 says, whether you turn to the right or to the left, you will hear a voice behind your ears saying, this is the way, walk in it. As Christians, we need to be listening. If you're not a Christian, if you've never asked Jesus into your heart and life, this may be the time that he's speaking to your heart. He so longs to be your Lord and Savior. You just need to come to him, confess your sins, Ask him into your heart to be your Lord and Savior and to lead you throughout the rest of these days. I pray that as you think about this, these verses, that they will guide your heart this week and that you will shelter in place in the Lord without fear and with a purpose. Would you pray with me, please? Father, your word will never return void or empty and we pray that whether it goes out over Facebook or a web page or YouTube that even right now through the power of the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit is speaking to individual hearts and lives Lord we thank you that you are sovereign God and that we can always run to you help us not to keep all of this to ourselves but to share it with those around us who are in desperate need of knowing Jesus as Lord and Savior. Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. And Lord, we, we do want to lift up all of our school children, their parents, the teachers, dear Lord, um, all of those who are sheltering in place and trying to deal with life on a regular basis. We just pray, dear Lord, that you will um, meet every need according to your riches in glory. Keep us in the palm of your hand. We love you and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. We are so grateful that you joined us for worship today. We ask that you just continue to keep uh, our church, uh, all of the people around you, wherever you are, in prayer, and that God would intervene in the way that only he can do, and that soon this virus will be eradicated and we'll be able to get back to our normal schedules. You have a blessed day in Jesus.